Hello everyone, so welcome back to our latest lecture session. So we were looking at a practical example right when the theoretical definition of an alternity is not valid yes because we have I think uh, we are looking at the case of an anaerobic diester where you have acetic acid being formed thus you know uh, your theoretical definition is not going to be valid because your acetate ion can uh, either take the proton or the acetate uh, acetic acid can donate the uh, proton right. So, we try to calculate uh, by looking at uh, H total 1 and H total 2 and the difference. Uh, we try to calculate H total and CO3 total and we end up doing that. So, now we need to look at the other aspects of the question. Let us look at what they are. So, obviously, uh, the question here is about calculating the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that would be in equilibrium with this water. So, in general, let us say your anaerobic diester, right? A very poor graph here. So, you are going to have uh, your particular solution here and you are going to have some uh, what do we say headspace here. So, you are going to obviously have a partial pressure of carbon dioxide right. So, the question asks us uh, what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that would be in equilibrium with this particular solution now, right. We are not adding any other uh, component. So, that is something uh, we should look into yes and also let us look at the other cases and see why we need to go through that and say that assume that the diester uh, begins to go sore I mean in general let us say your acetic acid right you know is going to form methane or end up uh, of the after the redox process you are going to have methane being formed. But if the kinetics is slower let us say what is going to happen you are going to have additional or you know more formation of uh, acetic acid. So, that is what is happening here I believe assume that the diester begins to go sore as in production of acetic acid exceeds the removal of acetic acid to form methane. So, the concentration of acetic acid increases right. So, here the rate at which methane is being formed from acetic acid is looks like is slower than rate of production of uh, your acetic acid. So, the diester is beginning to go sore right. So, assume that this can be represented by the addition of 1500 milligram per liter of acetic acid. So, additional amount of acetic acid present is equal to 1500 milligram per liter of acetic acid. If CO2 is not exchanged between liquid and gas, what will be the pH after digester goes sore? So, assuming that it is a, a closed system, let us say what would be the pH? So, again, why do you need to calculate the pH now, right? In uh, this particular anaerobic diester, you have different uh, phase, right? Hydrolysis, acidogenesis, right? Acetogenesis and methanogenesis, right? Uh, and the relevant, uh, what do we say, microorganisms that are uh, required for acetogenesis and methanogenesis you know they are active only in a very narrow pH range as in I think 6.5 to 8 or 7.5 uh, do not take my word for it, but anyway near the neutral pH now. So, when you have excessive formation of acetic acid you know that is uh, taking place what would uh, what would you observe? You would observe that the pH falls down right. So, if the pH falls down what is going to happen you know your whole uh, what do we say process is going to crash because obviously the methanogenesis is not going to go through you are not going to have formation of uh, methane which is what you are trying to produce right. Uh, gas that has high calorific value right which can be used for uh, commercial purpose let us say yes. So, that is one of the reasons why you would want to maintain a particular uh, pH. So, obviously you can either uh, monitor the pH regularly or obviously you can look at or calculate using women tech or by hand you know and predict what is going to be the pH and uh, be ready with the relevant remedial actions right. So, again let us look at part D2. So, obviously now calculate the concentration of lime right which is a source of OH minus ions that would be needed to reach the pH 7 if no carbon dioxide exchanges. So, in this case we are just trying to calculate the partial pressure of CO2 that would be in equilibrium with uh, the case as calculated in part A right and in part C we are trying to predict what would be the pH right or drop in pH if you have a diester going sore yes and then because obviously, you cannot let the pH fall below let us say 6.5 what are we trying to do? We are trying to add lime a source of OH minus the base right. So, that you bring down bring up the pH again to what pH now pH 7 anyway. So, now that we understood what it is that the questions are about or what it is that we are trying to achieve let us go through and see how do we go about this situation. So, here obviously, calculate the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that would be in equilibrium with this water. So, that can be achieved just by plugging in the uh, values from the last time. So, I believe I should have stored them and not uh, removed them from my particular uh, case, uh, but let me see if I remember uh, how to do so. So, earlier I believe we looked at uh, pH was fixed at 7 
right and what else we need to have a state concentration we had a state at 8.33 if I am not wrong right 8.33 and the units though are milli molal right add that to the list right and uh, what else is required though right we had pH 7 and I believe we also had to add alkinity and alkinity was what is it now and I think we had in milli equivalents per liter I think it was 34.7 or 34.734 I believe okay 34.734 in milli equivalents per liter so I am going to add that and so we ran the Vimintech right and we calculated uh, from this particular table CO3 total and H total which we obviously do not need to do that because we already have that but it is just asking what is the question asking for what would be the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that would be in equilibrium with this particular uh, system now right. So, as in it is not as if you are now opening up the system or such if it were open what partial pressure of carbon dioxide would maintain this particular pH and this particular CO3 total. So, uh, you know Vimintech has already uh, what we say solution for that it says you know if you just click on gases it will give you an idea about the partial pressure that would be uh, you know in equilibrium with this particular uh, solution and that we have is 0 0.02 atmospheres I guess right. So, but one key aspect that to remember is I guess this is a theoretical I mean a practical question but some of the values might have been off because the carbon dioxide in an anaerobic diester uh, the partial pressure would be you know much greater than uh, 0 0.2 atmospheres so anyway. But anyway that is something for you uh, from practical point of view but the gas that would be present here uh, in equilibrium with this solution would be uh, what is it now 0 0.2 or 0 0.02 pardon me or 0 0.2 atmospheres right anyway. So, let us be done with that and now move back to uh, our particular case. So, I am going to restart Vimintech right so that I do not have issues further because now I am not going to plug in uh, alkinity again. So, let us look at the question here. So, what is the first aspect this aspect we are done partial pressure of CO2 I think we calculated that particular value to be approximately equal to what now 0 0.2 atmospheres by just looking at the shortcut tab that Vimintech has for us and now we move on to estimating the pH if the diacer begins to go sore right. So, let us look at what we have here and these are the values of H total and CO3 total from part A right part A and this is what we I believe we calculated from uh, part A and now let us say what is it uh, what is the new aspect that we have now we have additional acetic acid HAC dot and that at the concentration of 1500 milligram per liter so, right. So, I want to convert this into millimolar units and I think earlier we calculated the molecular weight of acetic acid as 60 grams per uh, mole right. So, dividing by 60 what is that going to be? 1500 by 60 and right and so I think it should be around 25 is it 25 6 to 12 yes it is 25 that is equal to 25 millimolar right. So, what does this mean now? So, in effect uh, the diester has gone so to the extent that 25 millimolar of acetic acid or millimolar pardon me uh, right uh, millimoles of uh, acetic acid has been uh, formed. So, now we need to take this into our account and be able to go further. So, how do we go further now? So, what factors are going to change now? Is CO3 total going to change? No, because do you have any uh, components or you know uh, of CO3 total here? No, CO3 total is not going to change, but what is going to change obviously your estate total and H total are going to change right. I should have also written down the estate total uh, here but I think we know that that is 8.33 into 10 power minus 3. So, I am going to write that down here right. So, by adding HAC at 15 or 25 millimolar per liter how are these two particular total components going to change. So, that is going to be equal to a state total initial plus this new addition of acetic acid right and that is going to be equal to uh, what is it now 8.33 plus 25 right into 10 power minus 3 right and what is that going to be equal to am I plugging that right and that is going to be equal to 33.33 right 
into 10 power minus 3 and h total is again going to be equal to h total initial plus h a c naught right and that is going to be equal to what do we have initially it is 0 0.0482 plus 25 into 10 power minus 3. So, let us use Excel to maybe plug this in right and I think we already have this value this is our uh, particular case of uh, h total right. So, plus uh, 0 0.025 right and enter. So, we now have 0 0.0732 let us say and where do we have that that is equal to 0 0.0732 right. So, now we have our new conditions what are they we have CO3 total that is still same as earlier because addition of HAC will not affect CO3 you are not putting in any source of CO3. So, that is going to be equal to 0 0.0414 right. So, I have CO3 total I have a state total and I have H total. So, plugging this in what can I calculate I can calculate now the pH right. So, again if you uh, you know try to uh, look at it holistically you are adding in uh, your you, you know producing acetic acid which is equivalent to adding more acetic acid to your initial solution. So, thus we included the effects of this addition of 25 millimolal acetic acid on our total components right. You have case 1 and case 2 when you have more acetic acid. So, that is what we considered and calculated the total components of what is it CO3 uh, H total and acetate total when we added acetic acid obviously CO3 total is not going to change obviously because you are adding HAC, H total and CO, uh, HAC, uh, AC total are going to increase and that is what we calculated. So, we now need to calculate the pH right. So, once you add this amount of acetic acid to the initial solution what is the pH going to be. So, right that is what we are going to plug in and look at it here I guess right. So, let us go back to Vimintech and hopefully we can come back to these numbers when we want to and I think uh, we need to calculate the pH. So, we are not going to look at that. I need to show the organic compounds because I am going to have a state total right uh, and now I am going to have a state total and what is that particular value please that is equal to 33.33 right millimolal and where is this particular case right and then what next I also have CO3 total and where is that and let us look at that particular value where is that value please CO3 total is 41.4 let us say right millimolal and let us plug that in here right and now I need to plug in uh, H total I believe and where is that H total was equal to 73.2 into 10 power minus 3 millimolal right I am going to add that list just check to make sure uh, look right uh, let us run it and see if we have made any errors I guess. So, right run Vimintech and obviously now I mean seems okay. And what do you see now obviously if you added acetic acid at 25 millimolar to a particular solution. So, we now see that the new pH has fallen down to 5.88 right. So, let us just plug this in here and so now so what is the new pH it was or it is now 5.89 right. So, that is something that we need to uh, you know keep in mind. So, again once now the diester went sore as in your the rate at which acetic acid was being produced was greater than the rate at which the acetic acid was being what we say reduced to methane right. So, what is happening here you have accumulation of acetic acid. So, thus you are ending up uh, decreasing the pH and we wanted to calculate the pH. So, now it is 5.89 which is considerably less than pH of 6.5 which is I guess in general the lower threshold for uh, effective production of this uh, uh, methane or you know for the methanogenesis right. So, that is particular case. So, now you see that uh, the pH is less than what you want. So, obviously, you need to maintain the pH. So, thus part D asks us what would be the 
amount of lime required to bring the pH back to your particular value of pH 7. So, that is what we are going to calculate right. So, let us look at that and let us just look at the question one last time. So, calculate the concentration of lime that would be needed to reach the pH 7 if no carbon dioxide exchanges I mean considering that it is a closed system more or less right. So, we need to go back to pH 7 from what is it now 5.9 pH right. So, let us see how to go about that and I believe we need to again write down some of our initial values, but we can come back to this slide if required I guess right. I believe we will need to look at some of these values or these values too. So, let us just highlight them here ok. So, how do I calculate this now? I can estimate lime dose right. How can I estimate lime dose now? This is similar to your alkalinity carbonate and non carbonate. How would we estimate that? We estimate that by adding the amount of acid required to bring down pH from 7 to 4.5. So, here you are going to uh, you know have a trial and error approach. So, we are going to you know uh, we know the cases for the total components for pH of 5.9 right. So, we are now just going to plug in the same total components at pH of 7 which is the pH that we want to go to and we are going to calculate the difference in H total right. And from that we can calculate the equivalent amount of uh, the lime required that is for a, from a trial and error. So, again what is it that we are trying to do? So, let us say we have pH of I think 5.9 right and we have the relevant CO3 total and state total at this particular uh, case right and you can calculate H total right. And let us say if I am going to go to pH of 7.0 and maintaining the same CO3 total and estate total right. I am going to calculate a new H total right and what is this or how can this particular pH increase to 7 only when lime or a base is added. So, by calculating the difference here delta H total right I can estimate the amount of lime that is required right. So, it is equivalent obviously because it is CaOH whole twice. CaOH whole twice that is equal to Ca2 plus plus 2 times OH minus. So, it is needs to be balanced by or normalized by a factor of 2 right. So, this particular lime dose is obviously then because it is 2 OH minus per lime I mean per mole of lime. So, it is going to be equal to delta H total by 2. So, that is going to be equal to the approximate concentration of lime dose. Why do I say approximate? Uh, because we have not yet covered the uh, relevant aqueous complexes I guess right, but you know Ca2 plus will have uh, you know can form complexes, but here you know we are more or less considering that Ca2 plus is non reactive right. So, we will then first estimate the amount of lime dose required plug that in and then see if that particular value reaches to pH 7, if not we will have some trial and error procedure right. So, again what are we trying to do? We will first uh, plug in uh, you know try to find H total 1 and H total 2 at different uh, values of 5.9 and 7.0 and go through from that right. So, let us uh, go through from here please and I need to go to uh, Vimintech here Vimintech back to input menu did I specify any alkalinity ok I specified alkalinity to be on safer side I am going to restart Vimintech ok now we are back to Vimintech and let us look at our particular values here uh, what are our CO3 total and estate total please. They are CO3 total is uh, where is our case CO3 total is new CO3 total is still 0 0.0414. So, I am going to write that down here CO3 total is equal to 0 0.0414 right and estate total was equal to 33.33 into 10 power minus 3 estate total is equal to 33.33 into 10 power minus 3 right and thus is at a pH of what was the pH we approximated at 5.9 right at 5.9. So, because I am going with an approximation you know I guess I can calculate H total or I can also just use the pH H total from the previous case. What was the previous case H total? It was 0 0.0732. So, H total was 0 0.0732. This was the initial case right. So, I am not going to run that. So, what is the case I am looking for? How much base is required to bring up the pH to 7.0 right. So, now I am going to plug in CO3 total same case as above estate total same case as above 
and fix the pH at 7 and then calculate what is the H total, right. So, let us go back to Vimintech now and plug in CO3 total uh, 0 0.0414 and estate total, right. So, let us go back to Vimintech. So, the pH is now fixed at a particular value, right, and what is that 7, okay. And I need to plug in estate total and CO3 total. And first, I am going to plug in estate total. I think we mentioned that it was 41.4 millimolal, right? Okay, and let us look at that 41.4, right? And okay, I just made a mistake here 41.4, and it is millimolal. I am going to add that to the list. And what about CO3 2 minus? Was it 33.33 millimolal or something else? Uh, where is CO3 2 minus? Okay, it's right here. Uh, what's the? Pardon me. CO3 total was. Okay, I think I messed up the values. I think estate uh, total was 33.33 into 10 power minus 3, right? And CO3 total was 0 0.0414. Is that right? So, I need to I guess plug that in CO3 total was 0 0.0414 and what did I plug in? Ok, I plugged in uh, the reverse. So, I think I need to just change that here. So, CO3 total is 0 0.04, estate total is 33.33, right. So, I am going to plug that in here. and then CO3 total and that I think is 41.4 millimolal, right. And let us just check that too, 41.4 millimolal, right, we are on the right track. So, I am going to add that to the list, 41.4 CO3 2 minus estate total is 33.33, uh, back to main menu pH 7 is fixed and so I am going to run the Vivian tech. And now I need to calculate H total obviously, right. So, I am going to print to Excel and here we have the relevant output I believe. So, H total would be equal to uh, what are the components that I need to look at H plus plus 2 times H 2 CO 3 plus H E A C plus H CO 3 minus minus OH minus and enter. So, I get a value of 0 0.048, right, or 48.1 uh, millimolal, let us say, right. So, let us let me plug that in here. So, now the uh, H total was equal to H total 2 was equal to 48.1 millimolal, right. And what was the H total earlier? It was 73.2 millimolal. So, let me just write that down here. H total 1 was equal to 73.2 millimolal and H total 2 was equal to 48.1 millimolal, right. And this was obviously at pH of 5.89, right. And this is obviously at pH of 7. So, what causes this particular increase in pH 7, I mean pH or the decrease in H total? only when you add a base. So, the base that we are considering that we are adding here is uh, lime, right. So, as we looked at earlier, we know CaOH twice is equal to Ca2 plus and times 2 times OH minus, right. So, the lime dose, approximate lime dose would be equal to uh, delta H total by 2 right. So, 48 point uh, 73.2 minus 48.1 let me plug that in uh, that is equal to 73.2 minus 48.1 uh, enter. So, obviously, it is need to be it needs to be half of this value right is equal to 25.1 uh, pardon me is equal to this by 2. So, I get a value of 12.55 uh, uh, millimolal, right. So, I am going to switch back here. So, lime dose is approximately equal to 12.55 millimolal, right. So, this is what we have. So, but first again, uh, this is the case when we assume that Ca2 plus is relatively non reactive, which is generally valid, but 
you know the pH was still going to be slightly off when you consider this exact dose. So, we need to confirm whether or not if when we plug in this value of 12.55 millimolar lime dose will we achieve our particular case. So, we need to just run the confirmatory run. So, let us run that here. So, the C A total calcium total is the new component right C A total is equal to C A O H whole twice right uh, not and that is obviously equal to 12.55 millimolar and what else we need to also calculate H total that is equal to H total initial minus 2 times C A O H whole twice right this is the amount of base we are adding 2 times because 2 O H minus right H total initial minus this and that is something let us uh, calculate that what was H total initial that was 73.2, 73.2 minus 2 times 12.55 I think was uh, 25.1 right uh, this into 10 power minus 3 molal. So, let us just plug this in 73.2 minus 25.1 that is equal to 73.2 minus 25.1 and enter so 48.1. So, that is equal to 48.1 I guess it is more or less same of what we arrived at earlier right. Uh, but let us just plug this in and in we may take and see if we are going to get the relevant values or not. So, obviously, we need to plug in H total, uh, C A total and what else CO3 total and S J total right and what are these values CO3 total. So, CO3 total was 41.4 millimolal, 41.4 millimolal and S J total was 33.33 millimolal right 33.33 millimolal. So, let us plug this in into Vmintech back to input menu. So, I think uh, CO3 total and uh, estate total should still be present here estate right. So, we do not need to change that we need to add CA total and where is that equal to ok and the value of CA total was supposed to be equal to 12.55 millimolal right ok. So, this has to be 12.5 and the units are millimolar I am going to add that to the list and obviously, I need to plug in uh, H right and how much was the H total now what is the H total here right I need to look it up here H total is equal to 46.1 millimolal right 48.1 millimolal right ok 48 point millimolal and uh, I need to change that value here 48.1 millimolal units are still millimolal right. So, obviously, the pH needs to be calculated it is not uh, fixed at a particular value. So, let us just view and edit the list H total 48.1 estate total 33.33 and the other values back to the input or main menu and I am going to run Mintech. Right, I see that the pH is 6.95 not exactly 7 right. So, I need to obviously increase the concentration of what now I need to increase the concentration of uh, lime slightly to be able to arrive at my particular uh, pH of uh, what is this now 7. So, and I, why is this if you look at that the reason for this particular case is that you know C A state C A H C O 3 and C A C O 3 right you have some particular complexes being formed right you know in the earlier case when we looked at this particular example of uh, you know uh, adding lime and calculating H total difference we assumed that the C A total right or C A 2 plus was relatively non reactive right. But that is not the case here you know you have aqueous complexes going to be formed and this is going to be our next session. So, until now we have discussed acids and bases right. So, here as you see the C A 2 plus is not relatively non reactive it has or it binds with the uh, other ligands right which are acetic ion acetic acetate ion HCO3 minus and CO3 2 minus right. So, these are called aqueous complexes when you have a metal and a ligand right which is an electron rich species metal is an electron deficient species and then you have a more soluble complex right that is formed that is going to be called the aqueous complex which we are going to discuss further in the next set of classes. So, anyway with this particular so, uh, how do I go further I just need to increase the lime dose to be able to arrive at my pH 7 that is a trial and error case. So, that I can do that, but we are not going to do so. So, in the next set of classes we are going to obviously, start looking at uh, the next major aspect 
which is assets and basis. So, at this stage, you know, it is just uh, worthwhile to look at what we have been up to so far, right. So, until now, what have we been up to? We looked at the basics, equilibrium. how far can the system go right or travel and kinetics. This gives us an idea about how fast can this uh, system go right, how far can the system travel, how fast can the system uh, go let us say right. So, uh, after this particular aspect we moved on to the major aspect of acids and bases right, which we discussed for I think one third of the class until now or more than half of it which is a major aspect in our environmental engineering right. And now we are going to move on to aqueous complexes, right? Aqueous complexes, which would be of great uh, practical application in most uh, cases where you have any metals present, right? Or you know, in, when you have natural organic matter present. So, metals you would present in, let us say, in coagulation and flocculation, let us say, when you are choosing the type of coagulant uh, use, let us say, right? Or when you have contamination due to a particular metal in soil or groundwater, right? Again, you have complexes being formed and that is another aspect that you need to look at. Why is that? When you have complex being formed in general, the metal or you know the total metal concentration tends to increase. Why is that? Because aqueous complexes are generally more soluble, right. So, that will you know in general lead to a total concentration of your particular metal increasing. Anyway, we will go through this in the next set of classes. So, aqueous complexes and then we are going to look at precipitation and dissolution, right and the last aspect we are going to consider is redox. So, we are done with this, this and this. So, we are going to briefly talk about these two aspects uh, aqueous complexes and precipitation and dissolution and move on to the next major topic which is redox process something that is the backbone of uh, environmental engineering I guess right. So, again what is the common factor between or how can I differentiate be between these three aspects and redox reactions. Obviously, in acid bases aqueous complexes and precipitation and dissolution the oxidation number or oxidation state of your particular atom or your particular compound does not change right. It is only the coordination number that changes right, but in the redox process you have a change in the oxidation state of your particular uh, compound or the uh, uh, atom pardon me right. Okay, with that I will end uh, today's session and we will move on to aqueous complexes from the next set of classes and thank you.